Hello, everyone. Give everybody just a couple of minutes here to sign on before we really get rolling everywhere. Super excited to have you guys joining me today. I think this is a pretty cool topic. It's one that I feel like doesn't really get talked about too often, but our lovely inbox and our team inboxes, especially, that's going to be the main focus. Um, just some really cool opportunities there for people to be able to utilize that I am excited to share with everyone today. Alrighty, so people are slowly coming in. Um, give it just another minute or so. You know how these days can get a little bit crazy. All right. Got everything pulled up here. Cool. I'll go ahead and start getting into things. So thanks again for everybody joining us today um, on this month's edition of Getting Fubbed Up with Bridget. So hopefully you guys came ready and prepared to uh, get fubbed up today. I'm going to get into inboxes and team inboxes, especially some best use cases, best practices, um, and some really cool ways to be able to utilize all things follow-up boss. All right, so we are just going to dig right into our inboxes. So I'm sure, obviously, we're all familiar with just our standard My Inbox situation here where you guys are able to see all of your incoming emails so long as they are inside of your follow-up boss system as a user with an attached email. Then um, if you have a Microsoft Office or Google G Suite, anything like that, they have a really, really solid integration with Follow-Up Boss. So as long as they're a contact inside of Follow-Up Boss, then you will be able to see all of their emails right here within Follow-Up Boss. Um, as far as for incoming text messages and phone calls, this is where I always, always, always recommend people to be coming into. Um, Truth be told, a lot of times I will suggest for people if they feel like things are kind of falling through the cracks or they're not seeing everything in the way that they feel like they should be seeing everything. With that email filter right up here at the top when you're in your main my inbox, these filter drop downs, you can actually pick and choose what you'd like to see coming in your inbox. Um, I found that pretty much 95% of the time people always have their email browser open um, as a tab along with their follow-up boss system. So a quick trick that I've done for people in the past is just to exclude those emails coming in since you're already going to be getting them on your web browser anyway, just kind of segment it off into their own little, you know, inbox area for emails. Um, this way you can really be able to dial into your incoming text messages and your incoming phone calls or voicemails so that nothing falls through the cracks. Um, obviously, we recommend, you know, smart lists for going in, making those reach outs, making those attempts out to people. Uh, but for when people reply, if you want them all in one nice, pretty place, the inbox is the place to come. So that being said, if you don't have them as one of your phone numbers within follow up boss, maybe if you know, you handed out your business card when you were out at a coffee shop or something like that, and you're using your follow up boss dialer phone number. If they're not a user inside of your follow-up boss and they shoot you a text message or if they give you a phone call, then they still will come into this inbox and you won't be able to see any of their information. Um, this is an, an office hours account, so it's blurred out here, but it would just show their number right here in this section. And what's cool about that is you have the option right over here on the right-hand side to come in and actually add them as a person to the system. So instead of having to go in and think about who they might be or reach out if they leave a voicemail and say who they are or introduce themselves in the text message, you'll be able to add them right here directly. Um, looks like we've got something in the chat. Use the team inbox. Not entirely happy with the functionality. Why Lopo Rio sends offers my personal number, which I don't use incoming calls to the follow boss app shows the team, my team name. So yeah, we'll get into the incoming calls and stuff like that with the team inboxes in a moment here. Um, Ylopo, if you we reach out to Ylopo um, and just let them know the phone number that you'd want them to be using, uh, your CSM should be able to um, 
adjust your phone number so that it's your actual follow up boss dialer phone number. Uh, we've got a question about if calling through follow up boss, there is a charge. So if you're a solo user in follow up boss, you technically have a company number that you get to use by default. Um, if you have multiple users in your account, you will need to add on the dialer. I believe that's $39 a month. I don't have the figure if I recall correctly. Um, 39 additional dollars a month to have a follow-up boss phone number to be able to communicate from. Um, so, yep, you can come in and add people directly. So it's a really nice feature for incoming phone calls that you don't already have. And then we get down into some of these different company inboxes. So you can create multiple phone numbers for different situations. So a general company phone number, so like on your website or anything like that. And one of the benefits of having one of these team inboxes is going to be if you go to manage, you can see all the different ones. You can create multiple different ones, create a new team inbox. And what it does is it allows multiple team members to be a part of that inbox so that incoming phone calls and text messages, anything like that, routes to more than just one person on the team. Um, so this is really great for, like I said, those on your website, different calls like that. A couple of different ways that we've seen it used is for if you have like a billboard or radio ads, different phone numbers like that, and you can separate them out too. So like your billboard ad can be a specific number, your radio ads can be a different number. Um, and that way it kind of also helps with some reporting about the incoming um, phone calls and messaging that you are getting from these different kinds of lead gen sources. So um, spring, like if you do any sort of farming in a certain area, maybe you handed out a postcard somewhere with a specific number, uh, really helps you dial in on the success of where you put your money towards trying to prospect people. So if you go over here to the right hand side, you'll see the little edit inbox pencil. And this is where you can add multiple different phone numbers into the system um, based off of your guys' team inboxes. So you can just come in and add anybody else in the, to the system. Ring desktop. So Ring Mobile is not checked off here. So that means that as when you put them in as a user on your teams, um, they did not add their own personal phone number. But once they do, then they'll be able to have that checkbox uh, for multiple people that are going to be inside of a team inbox. You definitely want to be checking off this press one to answer and letting whoever is in that inbox know that the best practice is to be making sure that they have the press one to answer and to press one when they answer. Uh, it helps for the call routing and make sure that the call is a lot more successful. Um, another tip for people that you're going to be having inside of this different call routing um, is going to be whatever the name of the inbox is, I would recommend that you go, you get the number. So it shows you right down here, the different phone number, and you can change this number. You can adjust it. If you don't like the area code, as with your follow up boss dialer phone number, um, you can make it whatever you want. So have your teammates copy this number into their phone, save it as the inbox name. And then as mentioned in one of the chats before, it is going to come in the number. The phone call that you get on your cell phone um, is going to come in as the name of the inbox. Uh, that just lets you know that it's coming into multiple people. So since it's getting routed to multiple different people and you could have multiple different inboxes, it lets you know how that's getting into your system and to which number in the system that call is being going to. So because there could be multiple people in there, it's not going to just be one specific number. Um, having it saved as your company inbox name is going to let you know, oh, okay, they called the company number. That's why I'm receiving this call. And then a couple of different options that you can do. So you can have a voicemail within this inbox um, based off of the different type of inbox that it is. If nobody in the group, maybe everybody was busy and happened to miss the call or if it was after hours or anything like that, you'd be able to have it go to your voicemail inbox. So you can record that right here, or you are able to have it forwarded to a specific phone number. 
And this number is going to be somebody's personal phone number. So obviously you don't see, although Caroline and I are in this team inbox, technically, we saw here that we did not have our mobile phone numbers inside of the system. So it's defaulting to Mr. Lee Adkins here. And so this is would be his technically his personal felt cell phone number that it would then direct to and forward to. So both options are great depending on how aggressive you guys are trying to be with these different numbers. Um, and you can decide that for if there's no answer at all or if it's outside of the office hours. Um, your office hours, it does give you the option to come in and edit from here, but just in general, having your company settings office hours is gonna be super beneficial. So to get here without clicking that, you would go to the admin tab up here at the top over to our more and then down to our company settings. So you definitely want this to always be as accurate as possible. Your company name, have it exactly what your company name is. Um, there's a couple of different features like with batch emailing and stuff like that. It will have a little small print at the bottom that does mention your company name. So if you have it something crazy like 123 Bridget RE um, or something like that, that's what it's going to pull from is this area here. So that's just a little separate tidbit outside of our inbox settings, um, but super important that this is always kept accurate. And then if you scroll down here, this is where you'll be able to see your different kinds of office hours. So you can set them for, you know, if you want weekends off or if you only want weekdays, anything like that. And then the hours that you do. This also helps for if you, um, schedule different like batch emails and stuff like that. When it sends those emails out in advance, if you're scheduling them ahead of time, um, if you don't choose a specific time to send that out uh, and you just choose a date, it's usually going to do it at whatever time is the beginning of your office hours for the day. Let's get back to our inbox settings. Um, and then also having a connected email. So if you have some sort of like reception or just a general inquiry email address that you want things come to, if you're a little bit more handpicking of which agents get what leads, or if you just want to have a general email for, you know, certain kinds of inquiries or different questions about the company, maybe if you guys are really big on recruiting, so you have a separate recruiting email and a separate recruiting inbox, um, you would be able to connect specific types of emails to this. And whereas you get the different phone calls and the emails and stuff like that coming into your separate team inboxes, obviously you see what's going to happen here. You get those emails um, included with those as well. So you can connect a specific one that doesn't have to be necessarily your email. Like if you have you as a user account, you can connect a separate one here. But yeah, like I said, you can choose multiple different ones. One of my favorite features is definitely over here being able to add people or if you needed to update an existing person, if you already have them in the system and they're te texting you or messaging you from, you know, your work, their work phone number or an office line, um, I guess that would be a phone call, probably not a text, right? Anything like that, you'd be able to come in and give them a quick ad. And then adjusting these filters up here too. So this would open up once you get that connected email for all of those to be floating into your specific company email. Um, so bunch of different stuff. Unfortunately, you can't see anything sent within the inbox section right now. Um, I believe it's on the product team's radar for something like that to potentially be coming in the future. I know that there's been some feedback there. Um, as of right now, the inboxes really are just inboxes. Um, let's go down here to this one that's got a little bit more data. So a couple of cool things, let's go to postcards. A couple of other cool things that you're able to do within here too, with having multiple people inside of these inboxes is as for something pertaining to somebody in here specific, maybe they di didn't see it or something like that, you can actually create and write notes right here within the messaging itself. And you can do the app mentions.
we'll do Caroline here. Call them back. It'll create a note just like the notes within their actual contact card. It won't create the note in their contact card, but in the same way as if you make a note in there, it will notify them that you created a note. Um, so if this were a person here, let's add them. And we'll add them here. So now we get a little bit of a glimpse about some different information about them, relationships. It's kind of cool. You can actually adjust their stages and things right within this mode as well. Um, really all of those main details that are going to be on that left-hand side. And then you also get to see the activity um, from here as well. So a couple of really great points of reference for when you are making these calls about the person when you go and if you are calling them directly back from the inbox. But what I wanted to show you guys specifically is if we go into Bridget McFakerton, we can click on her name here, bring us to the card. As you can see, we do see that a voicemail was left, but we don't see the note from the inbox that was left in there. So all of that communication is going to continue to live inside of the inbox, uh, just so that your contact card doesn't get super cluttered and clogged up with anything unnecessary. Um, and you can see here, it adds a little pin. So this lets you know as soon as you come here, okay, I see that there's some notes that have been left on this person. Um, so maybe I should go and check them out. Um, another interesting thing that you're able to do is right now up here, you see that it's postcards. That means that this message is assigned to this inbox. And if this was a message specifically for Caroline, we would have the option to bring that drop down and assign it. You can assign it to a different inbox if it came in from the wrong area somehow. Um, or you can assign it specifically to one of your agents. So obviously you see here, call assigned to Caroline Beckerer. It gets out of this inbox. And now when Caroline logs in, in her, inside of her inbox, she's gonna see that, that Bridget McBakerton is now inside of her inbox with that voicemail call. Um, the notes will stay on there too. So she'll still be able to see anything that you'd try to mention about it. If you wanted to just drop a note about maybe why you were sending it to her. Uh, but this is also really great for some of these different company leads. Um, like I said, if you want to be choosing, you know, hey, I want all these calls to come to me, but I still want to be able to help assign the agent that I want them to be going to, maybe off of location or experience, anything like that. Um, so you can kind of monitor those incoming calls and then assign them to the agent that makes the most sense too. Um, and then closing things out. So if you close out, it'll keep your inbox nice and empty. Um, in doing that, it does not delete the messaging or anything like that from the card. Um, all it does is it just clears out your inbox so that if you like to live your life in an inbox zero mode, don't like too much clutter, too many things going on that you've already addressed, uh, then you can simply just close those out and not even have to have it on your radar. Um, one cool thing I think is pretty neat too is if somebody does come in and leave you a voicemail, you can actually download uh, the voicemail if you guys have on call recording um, and be able to maybe send a voice clip to somebody if necessary. Um, it's just kind of a nice feature that sometimes you don't realize you need until you have it. We just cleared that out. Let's go back to this one. Um, and then with the phone calls, these ones can also be closed out too. Like we just closed out the text message. The different features if you wanted it to still have this little this little blue dot means that there's things that have not been read or seen in here so if you want that to stay on the radar or maybe it's somebody else that needs to address and you don't want them to skip over it and you know assume that somebody else has handled it because it looks like it's a, um been read already you can go ahead and you can un unread things um and then you can also block numbers too because if something's clearly a solicitation or spam like we have here um, this is just a fake dummy account. So there's no way that we have an existing spectrum account anywhere. 
um, really easy to just go ahead and block that number and prevent any sort of things like that from coming into the system again. Um, and then you can also switch them to a text message if it makes more sense to text them back instead of to give them a, a phone call back. And you get all the same features too as when you normally do a text. So you can send your V card, photos, any emojis, still be able to utilize those templates. Um, the only difference I believe, okay, yep, is you can't schedule a text in advance to go out in that 24 hour period like you can in their actual contact card. I see something in the chat here. And it looks like the team inbox is used for their assistant. Yeah, that's a really, really great use case too. We see that a lot. Um, real estate agents are super busy people. So if you have an aid, uh, an assistant to be able to help aid you, um, it's really, really helpful for them to be able to have their eyes on things. There could be something that they're able to answer while you're away um, or just to be able to kind of have there on the forefront. Using those notes would be huge as a reminder, like, hey, Dave, I know that you were inside of a meeting at this point, but make sure that you don't let this one slip through the cracks. It's an important question. There is a closed section too in your main inbox. There's not in these inboxes here, um, but for your main inbox, for those things that you're closing out, you do have the option to go and have a view of these as well. Um, actually, if we drop down here. Okay, I didn't realize that under the My Inbox. Cool, sometimes I learn new things on these calls too. Sometimes y'all help me um, just to talk through things. So. That's a feature I didn't notice before, which is awesome. So you actually can see your closed things. If you did accidentally close something out and you're like, oh man, what the heck? I forgot who that was a part of or who was supposed to do that or I didn't save their information. Um, come up here to your closed section and then the same drop down and the way that you guys are able to reassign postcards, uh, you can pull up all of your closed different inboxes for assignment. So that is a pretty awesome feature there. I love to see that. And then any drafts here, obviously you'd be able to find inside of here. I always like to keep my drafts pretty clean um, unless it's something that I just need to send or remember until I'm ready to send. And then you can see different assignments. So after we just went and we assigned Caroline that person, you're able to come in and see the calls that you have reassigned over to people. So that's pretty nice feature as well. So lots of different things. I think more, more than you can do than people realize within the inbox section of Follow Up Boss, there's a bunch of really great tools and opportunities here, like we said, um, to see that more people are having access to different sorts of different lead generation that you guys are having out there um postcards billboards sign calls um just a general company number just to start out that that's a really huge help um so yes i'd love to take any additional questions i knew that this one was going to be a little shorter and sweet uh but i just feel like it's something that's not you know always talked about all the time and there is some really cool things that you can do within here so I'll leave a couple, a minute here or two for any pressing questions that I can help answer. Um, and if not, then that's okay too. But this is recorded. Um, it'll be on our YouTube, the youtube.com slash Amplified Solutions page, where you can see plenty of other different getting fubbed up with Bridget as well. And we will be back next month for a brand new topic. Um, haven't decided fully what we're going to do yet, but we've got a couple of really great ideas. So, alrighty guys, thanks for joining me today. It's a pleasure as always, and can't wait to get fubbed up with you again next month. Thanks.